Hi, I'm Renee, one of the health advisors here at the Courtyard Clinic and um, following on nicely from Camille's talk on peer support, I'm going to talk about uh, disclosure. Um, and in the past we've actually had an evening here at the Courtyard Clinic talking about disclosure. The questions are who to tell, how to tell, when to tell. And um, so continuing in that vein, uh, we're bringing this issue up again. Because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big issue for people when they're diagnosed with HIV and an ongoing issue. So disclosure is a process. Um, but once disclosure has occurred, it can improve relationships with family, partners and peers and friends and healthcare professionals. It means that you're not living with secrecy. You're not living in fear and you could interpret it as actually taking control. Um, of your life. And research has shown, as Camille previously mentioned, that it can lead to increased adherence of one's meds and both uh, mental and, and uh, physical health can be enhanced. But people are scared to tell. And what was previously being discussed is that people can be fearful of being rejected, um, of being judged, you know, both for men and women, or you've got HIV, or maybe you've had sex with a lot of people, that's why you've got uh, this, or if uh, you may have in fact acquired HIV vertically, so mother to child transmission, disclosing that status might therefore disclose other members of your family status. Um, you may also be scared that you're going to be ostracised by friends, family, community. Um, and also, sometimes people are scared to tell because perhaps that's the sort of person you are. You're not somebody who usually confides in people. Um, you like to keep things to, to yourself. Um, you have been fearful about other um, things in the past, and so that vein is just continuing. Um, also, you know, there's maybe your own internalised lack of acceptance of your HIV diagnosis. And then that's going to, you're going to be worried about how people view you and see you. Uh, you may be worried about losing control of your private information and what people are going to do with that. Um, and your confidentiality being breached. And, you know, people from perhaps uh, other parts of the world where perhaps medical systems are different, this may be a particular concern. Oh gosh, you know, people are going to talk, even at... The doctors may talk about it, or people may be worried about receptionists and things at doctor surgeries, or just sort of culturally as well. Um, people may be concerned about sort of gossip. Uh, and there's also the stigma that goes um, along with uh, HIV that there's you have an undesirable difference that sort of can undermine you know who you are. Um, but in lots of ways, that is sort of being addressed by things like such as peer support, support from your clinic, um, and uh, to, to address those issues. And also, you know, people have come out like you know, Magic Johnson or Nelson Mandela came out and talked about his own son having HIV. Um, and uh, So, you know, people are trying to address those issues of stigma. And yes, perhaps it could be helped by more you know, in the media, talking and, and normalising HIV, which is what, you know, we're all here trying to do, is to try and normalise it. Um, okay, so, telling people you're HIV positive, and I was just going to run through, okay, who to tell, there's the friends, there's the family, there's the sexual partners, the healthcare, uh, and the insurance specialist, and also we get a lot of phone calls about, oh, I'm applying for a job, they're asking about what, if I'm on any medication, oh gosh, what should I do or say. So, we just got a little bit to run through, but we'll do it as quickly as we can. So, who to tell? How do I choose who to tell about my HIV status? Thinking about different people, how different people might react to being told that you've uh, been diagnosed with HIV. And some of the things to think about is, why do I want to talk to this person about my HIV status? What are the benefits of telling them? Are they good at talking about emotional issues? Have they given me support in the past? Um, how would I like them to react, ideally? And what will I do if they don't react in the way I expect or hope for? Can I trust them not to tell other people? These are the sorts of things you're going to be thinking about. 
Um, so telling someone you have HIV can also be a positive experience and will hopefully mean that you have someone to offer you support. But you have to be prepared sometimes for different reactions. Some people may become upset, they may be worried about you, worried about your health, you're going to die, maybe they don't have the information about HIV. Um, but it, so therefore it might be useful to have some basic information to hand for them to look at and to provide reassurance. Um, and you may want to inform a sexual partner, a family member, a friend, uh, with the help of a healthcare professional being present as well. Sometimes we've done that too. Uh, and then before telling people, it can be helpful to talk it over with your healthcare professional or with uh, somebody, a, a peer support person, um, or um, r running through it with the, perhaps somebody at one of the, the peer support groups, uh, or just your own doctor. Um, so you may want to sound out um, people as well before you necessarily tell them about your HIV status by just having a general discussion about HIV or if a character on TV has got HIV you may want to have a discussion with them about that see what they're, they're thinking and saying. Um, now this is taken from a leaflet from the National AIDS Trust and they provide some excellent leaflets on disclosure especially on the legal side of things as well but uh, quote here from a uh, patient, disclosing for me was the most rewarding and freeing experience I have had in my life. Um, so they're sort of shackled by not telling anybody, and keeping that secrecy and then actually the revelation of telling someone, taking that risk. But, you know, often it's said that, you know, one has to take risks in life to, to forward oneself. Um, so that's a, a positive description there. Um, Alright, so whether to tell your friends or family members about your HIV diagnosis will depend upon your relationship with them. Often confiding a good friend or family member can be invaluable and they can be a great source of support. How should I choose a friend or family member to tell about your HIV status? That's something to think about. Friends can also be as close as your family or even closer. If you haven't shared much personal information with friends in the past, you might not want to tell them about your HIV status. It may be helpful to ask yourself of the person you want to tell if they've been helpful when you've talked about problems in the past, if they accept and love you, if um, they respect your privacy, if they're a good listener, they're someone who's practical, sensible, reliable. Um, and it's important to think about how people might they might react as well. So you may have friends and families who are really knowledgeable about HIV and others who know less. So it's important to be prepared for any reaction. Deciding which friends and families to tell uh, might also depend upon culture. So in some cultures, HIV is something which is hard to talk about because of the fears people have about it or the myths they believe. So, and you know, that can even exist in, you know, gay male culture as well. So, you know, let's not put that under the carpet either. Um, uh, also friends from any culture may uh, believe incorrect information about HIV and treat you differently or unkindly. If you think your friend might react like this, it may be easier if you get support from an HIV organisation or a peer support group or other people living with HIV. Um, okay, sexual partners. If you've just been diagnosed with HIV, you're going to be thinking about whether to tell your partner or not. Also, the health advisor um, or the doctor at the clinic may be saying, okay, let's think about, you know, if your partner needs to have uh, an HIV test or an HIV rapid test, that can often help if we say, look, we can get a result quickly uh, with an HIV rapid test. And you need to be, think about whether they're long-term or casual partners. <coughs> One thing you may not realise is that if you have an undetectable viral load, you can't pass on HIV. Um, and what do I need to think about? Your partner may need to have an HIV test if you've had unprotected sex recently. Your partner may need to wait a few weeks before testing to make sure the result is accurate. Um, and we say up to a month for a ser serological blood test. And with the finger prick test, we actually say it's up to three months. Uh, you may be in a long-term or casual relationship, or you might have just had sex with someone once. In each of these situa situations, you make the decisions you make about telling a partner will be different. In an undetectable viral load, you cannot pass on HIV, but condoms will also protect against other sexually transmitted infections. It is helpful to think about the different reactions partners may have to hearing about um, your HIV diagnosis. Hopefully your partner will be supportive, but it's always possible they may react badly. They may also not be aware that if your viral load is undetectable, 
you cannot pass on the virus. Some people face particularly difficult situations. You may live with your partner and be worried about losing your home. Uh, you may be worried about domestic problems or violence. You may feel um, you need support when making a decision uh, about how to talk to the person so you can get that support from your clinic, local support group, THT, other organisations. Does the law say I have to tell my partner about my HIV status? If you're having a protected sex, there's no law saying you must tell people that you're HIV. It's your choice whether you tell sexual partners. However, there are laws for England, Wales and Scotland. Um, in England and Wales, there is a risk of being prosecuted for reckless transmission of HIV. If you've had sex with someone who didn't know you had HIV and um, you didn't use protection and you hadn't been taking your medication and transmission occurred. That then, if they were to acquire the infection, that could be a, a legal problem. Um, but ever since, you know, the argument about um, uh, reckless transmission, are you being reckless if you're taking your meds, you're going to the clinic reg regularly, you could argue, actually, I'm not being reckless here. Reckless here. So we ha that ca a case like that has yet to be tested in court. Scotland's a different matter. Um, so, but if you want information about Scotland, there's the National AIDS Trust um, uh, booklet to read, which I'm going to show you at the end of this. This is a, a young person. Since accessing the youth service, I have a better understanding of my HIV, and I now know that I'm not facing this alone. HIV does not define me. I do. So, again, positive aspects of going along, getting peer support, getting confidence, defining who you are, taking control, um, and then being able to move forward in a positive way. What are the benefits of telling my partner? One benefit of telling a sexual partner about your HIV status is they can find out more about uh, protected sex, including learning about PrEP and PEP. Do I need to tell my previous partners? Whether you tell previous partners can depend upon a number of factors, such as what was your relationship was like, the type of sex you had, and whether it was protected. Telling previous partners can be difficult and you can ask staff at your HIV clinic to contact your ex-partners or even your current partners um, and they can do this without actually giving any of your details away. You remain anonymous. It's called provider referral. Um, and how can I help my partner understand more about HIV? Your partner may be anxious about your health. Be useful to have some leaflets to hand that you can show them um, and just understanding things about CD4 count being high, viral load being undetectable, and just that basic sort of mantra to have in one's mind. Um, but once people realise you can lead a normal life with HIV, you know, then they're going to relax and be able to better support you. They may like to find out about more about um, the partner study, which found that people with undetectable viral load cannot pass on HIV. Another idea is to take your partner along to the clinic for appointments so they can meet the doctor and ask questions. We're almost there. GPs, dentists and insurers, telling your GP. You'll find here that a lot of the clinics we do encourage you to inform your GP. Shared care, they may want to give you medications that could be contraindicated uh, if uh, they don't know about your HIV status. So we, we do encourage all our patients to inform their GP. Um, and uh, doctors, also can't refuse to treat you because you have HIV. Would my GP tell other people about my HIV status? No, not without your permission. All healthcare professionals, including doctors, legally have to keep your medical records confidential. This applies to non-medical staff, such as receptionists. No one should see your medical records unless they are involved in your treatment and care. Um, it is useful for different doctors treating you to be able to share information, such as the GP and the hospital doctor. So, you know, your clinic doctor may want to write to your GP about each appointment. Um, a doctor may have to reveal medical information, though, if forced to by a court or requested by the police, or if they think somebody's life's at risk. But that is very rare. Can a dentist refuse to treat me because I have HIV? No. It's against the law for dentists to refuse to treat someone with HIV. So, you know, sometimes we do find out about prejudice amongst healthcare professionals. Sometimes we've heard this, that some dentists have perhaps not had all the information they needed to have about HIV. Um, but uh, uh, 
basically it's against the law for any dentist to refuse to treat someone. There is no risk of HIV transmission during dental treatment if standard sterilization and hygiene procedures are taken. And I mean also sometimes dentists can detect if there's problems in the mouth with uh, your uh, HIV condition because uh, uh, various things can um, infections can show in the mouth with gum, HIV gum related problems. So you know dentists, if it's good dentists will be keen and look out for that. Obviously if there's any problems um, this should be reported. Uh, um, when would I need to tell an insurer about my HIV status? So this is a big one. This has also been a big one because the big problem in the UK is that not enough people with HIV are getting diagnosed with HIV. And why is that happening? Sometimes it's actually been prejudiced from, from doctors thinking, oh gosh, it would be a good idea for this person to have an HIV test, but if that were to occur, that might affect their insurance status. Well, that has been shown not to be the case. Any good insurance company will just come straight out and ask, are you HIV antibody positive? Simple as that. Um, have you got hepatitis C? That a good, not pussyfooting around like, oh, do you go to a clinic or you know, um, asking about your marital status. That's old hat now with regards to um, insurance forms. But when applying for life insurance or a mortgage, uh, which may require insurance, um, they may ask your GP about your HIV status. And one does need to not lie, um, so one should disclose that. But Insurance guidelines say you can legally be asked about your HIV status, about whether you've had a sexually transmitted infection in the last five years, whether you've lived or travelled abroad, had blood transfusions or surgery abroad, or whether you inject drugs. But just to let you know, there are plenty of insurance companies that will insure people with HIV, and they have excellent premiums. Um, this is this booklet I just wanted to highlight for you from the National AIDS Trust. Um, uh, about uh, disclosure. It's got lots of really very good and handy answers to lots of uh, legal questions you may have. Also a lot about employment as well um, and it's very helpful. Um, so applying for a job. Will I be asked about my HIV status when I apply for a job? Since the introduction of the Equality Act, employers are restricted on the questions they can ask about your health when applying for jobs and during the early stage of the recruitment process. You shouldn't be asked to fill in a question about your health before you have been offered a job. We often get lots of phone calls from patients saying, oh, I applied for a job to drive a bus and they wanted to know uh, what meds I was on and, uh, you know, to list them. And basically if I listed I was on my Truvada, you know, that might be a dead giveaway that uh, maybe I'm on PrEP or H has got HIV. And basically you do not have to answer those questions. Um, and uh, there's the backup from... Uh, the uh, booklet uh, from the National AIDS Trust, uh, you can find all the answers there. Um, and then it's, you know, a different case once one is, is employed, but you'll find now that it, even um, surgeons, midwives, people with HIV uh, can carry out those practices. They just need to have more regular occupational health follow-ups and uh, regular blood tests to ensure that they're taking their medication. So, you know, we are living in 2017, um, you know, it's not like, you know, the sort of late 80s, you know, people are a lot more informed now <coughs> and um, HIV, we want to normalise it, we want people to get tested, we want people to talk about it, um, get to that point where you know, sometimes there is secrecy, you want to hide, you know, not take your meds in front of people because they go, oh, you know, that might be feeling like you're giving away what your HIV status is. We do want to reach a point where we can normalise it um, and then issues about disclosure won't be so major. Um, there are lots of websites that uh, one can look at. This is another one of the websites, uh, which was this website here. Uh, lifewithhiv.org, uh, quite a good website to have a look at. And uh, just to go back to peer group support, there are local HIV support groups, organisations um, to join for support, advice and friendship, um, and they're just a couple that are, are local here. 
uh, already been mentioned by Camille, the Metro um, offering uh, support groups, also the South West London Fellowship uh, based here in South London, um, and there is a whole list of them as well. Um, so yeah, joining hands, being HIV anybody positive, and you know, getting support from, from your peers can be very, can enhance how you're going to manage your HIV care. And uh, it's very much something when people are first diagnosed, can be very helpful to go along to a newly diagnosed support group and run through a lot of those issues about disclosure um, and ways to do it. And just to remember the anticipation of a dreaded event is often worse than the event itself. And, um, and if you are knowledgeable about your HIV, knowledge is power. And if you know you're taking your meds, you're looking after yourself, you're going to your hospital appointments, then risk of transmission, your viral load is undetectable, risk of transmission is minimal. But it is about all of us dealing with the stigma of HIV um, that's you know, going to alleviate a lot of the anxiety that people have about disclosure. So it's about being well informed about HIV, it can give you confidence to speak to your family, friends and sexual partners with authority and in a reassuring manner. People with HIV diagnosed early can have a full lifespan, the key is taking your meds, attending your hospital appointments and you know, having a full life. Sadiq Khan um, last year spoke very eloquently about um, HIV and HIV testing. It's good to have someone like him on board, a figurehead like that. We need more figureheads like that to be talking about HIV. And uh, despite the cuts, we're going to do it. Um, and I just want to thank Bernard Kelly and Simone Ghosh for their support in um, preparing this talk. Thank you.